morning everybody glad you can tune in those listening online and on uh, YouTube as I uh, gonna download a message today today I want to man my uh, everything good there okay just making sure because through the time you know one time we I taped there was no sound there's no sound <laughs> just gonna make sure so I just want to pray first because today uh, I'm sharing a message that's really, really on the heart of God, but also it's very uh, there's a there's a debate there, and and so I just want people to know that uh, we're going to be preaching on the gifts of the Spirit of God, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So Father, I just pray that you will uh, catch the attention of people listening online and here, Lord God. I just yield myself to you, Father. I just yield myself to you, and I pray. That you help me share this message. Not sure how far I'm going to go. But Lord, it's a message that really is important for the times we're living in. That we need to be on fire for you. We need to be soaked in the presence of God. To be filled with the Holy Spirit. And Father, I just pray that you will touch every soul listening. In Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Okay. So, I just want to go to scriptures first. And uh, Luke... First of all, the title of this message is called, How is Your Power Supply? How is your power supply? Amen. Anybody here, everybody, if you are spirit-filled, hopefully, if not, after this message, you will be, <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> Hallelujah. In Luke chapter 24, verse 45, it says, Then he opened, said, you want to close the door over there? It's okay there. Maybe their door. <laughs> <too. laughs> it's okay, they're having fun. It says there in Luke 24, 45, Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise again from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for forgiveness of sin would be proclaimed in, the name, in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are... Witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending forth the promise of my Father. This is what Jesus said before he left. Upon you. But you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany. And he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he, he parted from them. And it was carried up into heaven. And they, after, uh, and they, after worshiping him, returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising God. So just Jesus is leaving and he's telling his disciples, uh, prior to that, if you look, go in, in, uh, in the book of John, uh, John 14, 15, 16, and 17, uh, that he's going to send the Holy Spirit. He talks about the Holy Spirit, how uh, he, he has to go. If he doesn't go, the Holy Spirit can't come. So in the heart of in an art in a, in a, in a nutshell, Jesus is anxious to go because he knows he wants his people to be endued with power. That's the key uh, message that I want to give this morning. Then in Acts chapter one, verse one, it says, "The first account I composed Theophilus about all that Jesus began to do and teach, until the day when he was taken up to heaven." After you had, uh, by the Holy Spirit, giving orders to the apostles whom he had chosen, to these he also pre presented himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over a period of 40 days and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God, gathering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem but to wait for what the Father had promised, which he said, you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, is it at this, at this time you are restoring the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know times or epoch which the Father has fixed for his own, by his own authority. He's coming. He's talking. They're, come, they're talking about him coming back. <clears throat> but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, 
and you shall be my witnesses. Now, this is a key thing that Jesus said. Remember the word witness because it's it carries a lot. It carries a lot in what I'm going to share this message. Because to become a good witness, a witness, you have to be filled with God. You shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest part of the earth. Now, many think today that this was just for the first church, but it's not. It's actually for every person that are willing to have it. So here the Lord is saying power to be a good witness. Jesus promised his followers power to be able to sustain them and to be able to do great export for his kingdom. Now Karen touched on something that really is key. We need, we're living in a time that we need the power of the Holy Spirit. We really do. Whether you believe it in it or not, I'm telling you, it's genuine. I remember one, uh, one minister years ago, he, I doing some evangelist uh, meetings here in town and, and uh, <laughs> sitting at the table with different pastors from different churches. And this certain pastor approached me and says, you know, you know, you know that time thing and this, these things there that you guys do there? He says, you know, uh, are you going to promise that it won't, won't happen? And I says, do you, do you think we make that happen? I says, I can't promise you that. It's impossible. I says, and so, okay, okay, okay. You know, so I think you know what kind of, you know, I'm not going to go against the denomination, but I'm just saying the poor, so poor people now, they don't believe that it's of today. But fortunately, this church, our church, is a victory church, and we believe in a fivefold ministry giftings, and especially being baptized in the Holy Spirit. So I want to talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit today. Not sure how far I'm going to go, but there's a lot to. So if you're taking notes, I'm going to go deeper. I'm going to touch, maybe I have time to touch a little bit on the aspect of what happens, how God works. Uh, but the thing is, we all need the baptism. So I'm going to share how you, to, to get it and, and, and all that. So really what he's saying, it's called dunamis power. Dunamis power is power to be able to do great exploits for the Lord. And that's why Jesus wanted them to tarry. He wanted them to wait because without the Holy Spirit, without the Holy Spirit, they would have not been able to do what they did. And the same goes today. You know, many walk today on the earth, many professing Christians, they're saved. They are saved, but they have never been baptized in the Holy Spirit. And because of that, they lack the power that Jesus spoke about. They come to a place to believe that it's not for today, but yet it's a lie from the pit of hell because it is from today. And it breaks my heart when I go on YouTube and I listen to, so, you know, I'm not going to bash uh, denomination, but people were taught things that are not true. If they have never experienced, they think it's not of today, but they have never turned to God and say, God, is it of today or not? See, they don't have a teachable spirit. They just go by what they were said, they were told. But it was so important for Jesus, for their time, it's even more important for Jesus in our time. I'm telling you, the more we're going in the world today, you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, it changes you forever. And so this is what's missing in the lives of many Christians today. And this is why many are not living the life of victory. And it's sad. It breaks my heart. And as I was making this message, I've used different notes. And, and I realized that I, I, there's some stuff I didn't even know. And I realize the difference why some are living in victory and some are not living in victory. It's because, first of all, they don't read the word. They don't have the word in them. But also they don't have the power to bring them true because they have were told it's not for today. So they live. Christians are there meaning well. They lack the power of God to become everything that God wants them to be and to do. So today I want to encourage you and challenge you to seek the power of God for your life. Those here, if you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit, and those listening online, I'm telling you, I'm going to go deep. You're going to hear stuff. And for many, for probably you have never even heard of such thing as the baptism of the Holy Spirit. 
Or maybe part of a denomination doesn't even share that. But it's part of being a real Christian, a true Christian today. It's not a cult. It's really the reality of being a true believer in Christ Jesus. So I want to teach this message. going to teach you how to acquire that power and also especially how to stay empowered because you can lose power if you don't watch yourself. So this message will cover both. And this is the goal of the message. This message came about when, uh, you know, <laughs> dude, this is how God speaks to me. And uh, we lost power. Karen asked, how did you manage to? Well, you know, we had battery pack and just preach audio. But anyway, we, we, we didn't have power last week, last Sunday, for uh, 10 and a half or almost 11 hours, I think. Hey, and so, uh, yeah, and so I come back home, and and I think I was like, and that's how God, the Holy Spirit, showed me about the title of this message, and this is exactly what I said. I said, how is your power supply? I told Helen, how is our, because the thing is, with no, you ever realize without power, we can't do much in a society we live in? You know, even people that are clicking there and, you know, on the Internet, they can't even go on the Internet because you have no power. And so that brought about that message, how is your power supply? It's like God was asking me a question, and he's asking you a question. How is your power supply? Are you on fire for God? I don't know about you, but I'm stirring myself in my house. You know, Paul told Timothy, stir yourself in your most holy faith. Come on, get with it. You know, stir the gifts inside of you. Come on, how do you do that? You do that by worshiping God, by praising God, by reading the word, by praying, and then showing God you mean business. I'm going to finish that race. Amen. Do you want to finish your race? Good. Well, God expects you to be on fire for him. Right? In, Re in the book of Revelation, what does he say? Those are lukewarm. What do you say? Huh? <laughs> I want to be on fire. <laughs> Catch me up. <laughs> I want to be so on fire for God that when he catches me up, I'm still shaking. I'm so, ah! <laughs> you know, because I want him, I want him, I want to do everything possible. But, you know, there, it's more than physical power that it does. And I'm going to get into that. But the thing is, being baptized in the Holy Spirit, I realize more and more. It's like the Spirit goes inside your human heart. And he goes and he chisels everything. And he takes out some junk. And it's, it comes by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why I keep saying, you know, I remember when I first, you know, I was in the airport church years ago. And, and so, uh, you know, I had heard about it. And I said, Lord, it has to be you. If you, I don't want anybody to push me. So the Holy Spirit, the, the person just touched me. I went, boom. Then I was on glue to the floor and then water. I saw bubbles, you know, saw bubbles. And the Holy Spirit says, ah, I got you now. <laughs> and I was stuck on the floor. I literally could not come out. Helen, too, we were holding hands and hands. And the Spirit of God started to do stuff in me. And I know it's real because he did it, right? So God, the Holy Spirit, goes in the, inside a human heart. And he changes us from inside. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is, is more than just one time, too. It's, uh, it's, uh, it, there's many infillings. Uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting excited. But but it has a lot to do with him allowing it and really believing God. Finishing our race. Paul finished his race. You know how he finished his race? He finished his race because he he, he so, was sold out for God. These people, they, they were ready to die for their faith, but it was not under their own power. Their own ability was because they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And the times we're living in, we will need that to stand for our faith. And so today I want to encourage you and challenge you to seek the power of God for your life. Jesus said not to leave Jerusalem and, and wait for the promise of the Father. Today we get that power when we wait on God after asking for his precious gift. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. I want to bring you to something that God also showed. It was not in my notes. But I want to read something to you that Peter. Remember Peter? Peter, if there's one. Well, I'm, I'm a type of Peter. Sometimes I open my mouth before I think. And I get myself in trouble. <laughs> and Peter, 
Peter, he, he, he thought it was so strong for God. The, and then Jesus told him, I'm, you're going to deny me a few times. And he says, oh, no, no, no. Well, yeah, well he did, right? Because right? he was under his own flesh. He was not under the power of God. There's many mistakes that Peter did. Peter did some stuff. He walked on water. His fate was up there. Then he saw the wind. He saw the storm. His fate lost. There's many things he did, right? But Peter writes something in first in Second Peter that I want us to pay attention. It says there, Simon Peter, a bond servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who are received a fate of the same kind as ours by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace. Remember, grace is the power of God to do what God has called you to do and to be what God wants you to be. It's the empowering presence of God to be, give you the ability and the gift things to be able to bring you where he wants. That's the grace of God. Okay, many say, well, the grace, it's, you don't deserve it. It's God's, you don't deserve it, but it's the power of God if you study grace. Anyway, that's another subject. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Now notice verse, verse 3. Seeing that his divine power, okay, his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. And for by these he has granted to us is precious gear, uh, precious and magnificent promises, so that by them you may become partakers of what is the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. So Peter is saying this, and I jump in my face, and the Lord says, "Okay," in my heart he says, "I want you to share this." Peter was a changed man. Why, Peter? Uh, got baptized in the Holy Spirit, and he got so touched by God that God went in there, and the nature of God can only you can only be transformed from inside by the power of the Holy Spirit. So that power, you have to tap into that power. You have to tell God, and uh, I, I want to share something from uh, John G. Lake uh, a little bit further. Maybe I should share it now. I'll, I'm going to share it now. Because we're talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This book here, this book, I would challenge, I would challenge anybody that's spirit-filled to read this book. Something happened to the camera. Sorry. I don't know what's happening there, Dan. It's okay. Anyway, John G. Lake, okay, he's a man that lived in 1918, 19, uh, 19, anyway, he was born in 1900, okay, Tw 100 years ago. This guy, when I read this, his sermons there, I understand some stuff, what happened to me so far in my walk with God. And uh, it's so, uh, but he goes inside some stuff, especially the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, so I just want to share something from John J. Lake's perspective, the importance. See, John J. Lake, before John J. Lake, had, he had a ministry, he had a healing ministry. And, uh, and what happened uh, he had a healing ministry. We were all being baptized in the Holy Spirit. But God would heal. God would do some tremendous awesome stuff through him. But then he got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And he shared some stuff that happened to him that I'm starting to realize myself in my walk with God. So that's why at times, I, sometimes I don't understand why I shake. And, but he talks a bit about that in there. But anyway, he said this. This is from him. Baptism in the Holy Spirit sermon series. Uh, number, uh, I'm just going to glimpse. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, or Holy Ghost, is the greatest event in Christian history, greater than the crucifixion. Don't get mad at me. Uh, you know, let me finish, okay? Greater than the crucifixion, or greater and poor, and poor than the resurrection, greater than the ascension, greater than the glorification. It was the end and final, finality of cruc crucifixion and resurrection, ascension, and glorification. What does he mean by that? What he's saying is, it is as important. All of these is important. Salvation is important. But the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the, uh, the dessert of being a believer, of what Jesus died for. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what he's saying. If Jesus had been crucified and there had been no resurrection, 
is that would have been without avail in, insofar as the salvation of mankind is concerned. Or if he had risen from the grave in resurrection and failed to reach the throne of God and receive from the Father the gift of the Holy Ghost, the purpose for which he died and for which he arose would have been missed. It is because that there was no failure. It is because Jesus went to the ultimate, to the very throne and heart of God and secured the Almighty Spirit right out of the heavenly treasure of the eternal soul and poured it forth upon the world in divine baptism that we are here tonight. He was preaching this message. So what he's saying is that it's so important for God. It should be the same for believers. If you're listening online and if you're listening, you should, if you don't believe in the baptism, I'm telling you, just ask God. So John G. Lee came to that revelation. Then there's a few other things I want to share, then I'll move to my own notes. It says, The baptism of the Holy Ghost was such an importance in the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ that he commanded his disciples to tarry in Jerusalem until ye, ye be endued with power from on high. And these steadfastly carried out uh, the Lord had what the Lord had commanded, waiting on God in a continuous prayer meeting in the upper room for ten days until the promise of the Father was fulfilled. Actually, me and Helen supposedly we were in that room, but I'm not sure. <laughs> but we went to Jerusalem and we were in an upper room somewhere. So, and that that baptism had fallen, of which John the Baptist spoke about. I indeed baptize you with water into unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Matthew 3, 11. The fire part is the part that I was just described. The fire part is where God goes in and he does a, a supernatural. He burns the chaff. He burns, you know, when... Uh, when um, Precious metals, they're burnt, right? Gold and all that too. Well, it's the same process. God goes in there and he takes away all the stuff that needs to be taken out. And this is what uh, John the Baptist was hinting on. So I don't want to uh, read too much of what he says here. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is not an influence, nor yet a good feeling, nor sweet and sensation, though it may include all of these the baptism of the Holy Ghost is the incoming, uh, incoming into your personality of the Holy Ghost, which is the Spirit of Jesus taking real possession of your spirit or inner man, of your soul, the mind, and animal life, and your flesh. He possesses the being. The flesh is caused to quake sometimes because of the presence of the Spirit of God in the flesh. And anyway, he goes on and on. But to him, John J. Lake, one of the greatest men of God, uh, even, uh, you know, in the, uh, you call it the 19th century or you call it the 20th, 20th century, I think you call it, right? The guy, the guy was moved, moved so much in the power of God, it was unbelievable. But he declared this, he declared that we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So how we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I don't know about you, uh, but he, I don't know. I've shared many sermons so far. I shared the other day, I shared the tangible presence of God. John J. Lake, again, he's the one who, you can, uh, the Holy Spirit is a, is, is a presence. He's, he's real, he's tangible. We sense him here this morning. He's power, but yet he's a person, right? How do you describe? And then he's power, but yet he, he goes a person, but he comes and lives in you. And he represents Jesus. And it makes you feel whole from inside. If it wouldn't be for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, sometimes I, because I did this message, I realize more that when I share some stuff with people, I understand more why I sense certain things. I sense the Holy Spirit. It's like Danae, she knows, you know, we know, you know, Karen, I'm sure you're like that. You know that you know it's because of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You sense His presence and His power. Unfortunately, many saints don't experience the presence of God. Why? Because they have not been baptized, fully submerged in the Holy Spirit, right? And my heart is that people will get that. They will challenge God. They will just ask the Lord because God wants us to ask. There's no limit to Him. And so He can come as we wait upon Him either at home 
or in a church setting with elders laying on hands. There's different ways of receiving that baptism of the Holy Spirit. Some are even baptized. When you baptize people in water, sometimes if they're open to it, the Holy Spirit will come upon them. But it's all a matter of the heart, whether you believe in it or not, right? If you want it or not. In one place, Jesus was telling people about his Father's love for them. And that is a great desire to give, to give the Holy Spirit. Like Jesus is, was speaking about the love of the Father. And then he says this in Luke eleven thirteen: If then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Out of nowhere, Jesus is talking about how God will take care of all their needs. And then he finishes that with that. Like I always wondered, why would I ask the Lord? I says, why would you end the, with the Holy Spirit, the good gift, the Holy Spirit? It's because God the Father knows that the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the fresh fire of God, as we ask Him, He knows that this is the best gift uh, to sustain life. Because prior to that, He was talking about. He was talking about how he will supply for our needs and all these things, right? But then he ends with this. Why would he end with this? It's because of all the things happening around us, the only thing that we need is God, the Holy Spirit, to comfort us, to empower us. That's why Paul could say, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Why would he say that? It's because he was so immersed. And the Holy Spirit, so immersed in, in tune with God, by the Spirit of God, that he was ready to die for his faith. And I'm telling you, if you don't have the Holy Spirit in the times we're going ahead, you have to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You have to. If you have never been baptized, I would, you know, I'm telling you, there's power. There's protection. You hear, you hear the voice of God. You hear, you, you're so, you're more in tune with God. God will manifest his presence more if you have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Whether you believe me or not, I'm telling you, I'm talking about experience. I I'm really am. I'm not talking about uh, going to, you know, studying things. Uh, and, um, I'm talking about experience. He is tangible and he is real. So I'm realized more and more today that many Christians are not living victorious life because they have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Or if they have, they have not been able to keep the fire going in their own lives. That too is a sad part, right? Went to revivals, got baptized, got on fire for God years ago, and then they live in the past and they don't live for God now. It's slowly been, they haven't stirred the gifts. They haven't stirred themselves. And so they live in defeat. Men today have also been discouraged by some mainline denomination that's saying it is not for today. And that is very sad. I'm not going to bash denomination. This is not my point. But I'm telling you, it is genuine. It is true. And when I watch on YouTube sometimes, I, I don't know, sometimes some people think they are the judge. Jesus says that he's the judge. And so they judge people like our faith. They judge people that worship in the spirit. They don't, you know, and sometimes they will manifest. They, they don't understand the power of God. Sometimes when it touches a human body, it affects your human body. Like I've, I've, I shake at times. I've, uh, I've uh, birthed many times. Uh, you guys probably have seen me uh, many times. I remember even in Mexico. I was in Mexico over in Ensenada, the Spirit of God came on me, and I didn't make it happen. I went on the ground, and I start to birth something, and then God says, prophesy, and start to prophesy over the city of Ensenada by faith. So I, I know what I'm talking about. I've done some weird things, and sometimes I will ask God, why, Lord? And sometimes it's even in front of my elders. But God is doing something in me that he wants to take out or whatever and empower me. But all these things are all real. And people mock that. It's sad when the body of Christ, some, they don't understand. They shouldn't even touch that. If you don't know what you're talking about, if you're judging, I wouldn't even be. You know what? On judgment day, I don't know what's going to happen. But Jesus said this. 
Jesus says, whoever blasphemes the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. Meaning if you see that something is demonic, where it's the Spirit of God, I wouldn't even be light in their shoes. I wouldn't light, because I'm telling you, it's serious stuff. The Holy Spirit is very precious to God. Very precious. He's a person, and we need to respect him. And in some denomination, if you're, you're tuning in and you don't believe in that, I wouldn't even touch that. Just, But if you really want to know the truth, just ask God. And God will show you if it's true or not. Have a teachable spirit. Serious stuff. And so many today have been discouraged because of their denomination or certain people have learned of things. And they're being deceived, believing it's not for today, but it's especially for today. Especially for today. There are many Christians today who are not seeing and experiencing the kingdom realm because of this very thing. And it's sad. Mark my word, there's a big difference between a spiritual believer and a non-spiritual believer. They're, still, they're both saved. But the revelation knowledge that comes to a spirit-filled believer, finally God is showing me that it's because you're spirit-filled. Spirit-filled believers are more in tune, the Holy Spirit. They're more in tune with things of the Spirit. It's not to say that God can't speak to people that are not spirit-filled. But they are very limited. Very limited. There's a big difference. And so it will show in lack of power, lack of revelation knowledge, and also lack of holy living. I've seen that too. I've realized in this teaching I'm going to bring you in depth. Where if you're a spiritual believer, your life will be at times more holy than somebody who's not spiritual. It's because God, you allow God to go down deep by the Spirit of God to go and deal with some stuff that you need to needed to give to Him. So all this is all... Uh, is all uh, uh, what the Holy Spirit can do in your life when you're baptized. If the followers of Jesus Christ needed the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the past to be effective witnesses, how much more is it needed today? How much more? And like uh, we were told, uh, Karen shared, we are entering times that we've never seen before. Now, you know, am I? Is it true? Has there ever been a time that the whole world was shut down because of a virus? Has there ever been a time where the economy is being affected and it will be affected? Has there ever been a, a time where all it seems that what Jesus prophesied are slowly coming to pass? And even now, the media, the mainstream media is not covering what's happening in the Middle East. There's things happening in the Middle East. And the Middle East is the time clock. Israel is the time clock for the end times. They will not report on stuff that's happening right now. But there's things happening that's showing that Jesus is coming back very soon. And the times prophesied are coming in line. The, uh, the, the nations are being in line right now. Right behind. And, and the media is not covering that. So we're living in times not to fear but to have faith and to stand strong. How can you ever can become like that? How can we ever become like the people in the first church where they were ready to die and sacrifice and burn the stake for their faith? It's because they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. It's because they had waited for the power from on high that Jesus had prophesied would come. And I'm telling you, in the times we're living in, we have to press in more of God and spend more time with God. And say, God, I need more of you. I need more of your Holy Spirit. It's like we've learned there's many, many infillings of the Holy Spirit. That's why when somebody, an evangelist will come and you see people falling on the ground. And they, they get filled with the Spirit. Because that's another infilling. Because they needed that infilling. And that's why it's important to stay on the ground. The Lord showed me, stay on the ground. I'm not done. And so God does operations in the human heart, those that are totally surrendered to him. Why? Because he knows that we need him. And what it causes inside is to fall in love with Jesus even more and to love our neighbors, we love ourselves even more. 
That's what the baptism of the Holy Spirit does. It goes in deep and it makes you the man or a woman of God you're called to be. It's genuine. It's real. It's needed. You know, when a person truly receives Jesus Christ as their Lord, the Holy Spirit does go inside the human being. But that doesn't mean they're baptized in the Holy Spirit. It only comes by asking in faith. Sometimes by the laying of hand or just asking by yourself. You can be alone and ask him. I'm going to share some stuff. I'm not, I'm not going to be able to finish this message this morning. I'm going to share as we enter in this message. I'm going to share some tips and how for those it's new for you. Next week I'll be sharing how to do that. In Acts 8.14, it shows examples of they were, these people were already baptized in the Holy Spirit. But then they got into another feeling. In Acts 8.14, it says, Now when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaritan had received the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Oh no, this is this 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 is about how they never received the Holy Spirit when waiting in Jerusalem, sorry. For it had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They had been baptized in water. Okay. They, then they began laying hands on them and they were receiving the Holy Spirit. Do you see the importance of receiving the Holy Spirit here? This is the first church. The importance, the church had been birthed, but yet there are some people that were seeing Jesus as Lord, but yet they had not been baptized in the Holy Spirit. So they saw the need, and so they laid hands on them. In Acts 19.1, it says, It happened that while Apollos uh, at Corinth, Paul passed through the upper country and came to Ephesus and found some disciples, and he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said to him, No. We have not even heard where, whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, into what, uh, what then uh, were you baptized? And he said, in John's baptism, the baptism of repentance. Right? Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of the repentance, telling the people to believe in him who was coming after him. That is in Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid, had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they began speaking with tongues and prophesying. Do you see the importance of receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit? If the church needed them, the church had already been started. And there was people still on the sideline that had never received Jesus as, uh, they had received Jesus as Lord, but had never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And they were, they, 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 uh, they how can I say that? They saw the importance of laying hands on them. Well, same, the same scenario is today. The same scenario. I remember when I first got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And some people don't even know how I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Do you know how I got baptized in the Holy Spirit? I was going to Ottawa, and uh, you know we all need a mentor in our life, and I was just a baby believer. And God was, you know, started to read some different books and all kinds. God was raising me up and the prophetic and stuff like that. And then uh, I, I started to live uh, the Morning Star Journal, Rick Journal, and all that. But I was not baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I wanted it. And I went to Ottawa, me and Helen. And uh, Jerry, Helen's uncle, lives there at that time. And then uh, he says, well, you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I says, yeah, I want to. He says, well, you know, I'm going to call my, my sister, brothers and sisters, in Christ, my brothers in Christ. So he had a group of men praying together, Catholics, ca charismatic Catholics, and Pentecostal. And they came, I re still remember, still remember I was in, the, I was in, the <laughs> in his living room, and they all circled me and Helen, and I said, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, please, I really want it. I really want it. I want it. You, know, you know, like you could get a kid, right? And so, so they laid hands on us, and then I was still wondering if I had it, and so because I was asking the Lord in my heart. And then one fellow, uh, I think it was a Pentecostal uh, uh, brother, uh, he says, "Hey, the Lord wants you, you to know that you, yes, you do have it." 
oh, thanks. So anyway, so that was it. So we came back to Capus Casing, and me and Helen, we said, okay, okay. So we're going to go. Well, we didn't speak in tongues yet, right? Wanted to. So Helen says, I'm going in that bedroom. I'm going, fine, I'm going in that one. <laughs> so we went there, and the Holy Spirit, we start to a few syllables. <gasps> I got it, I got it. You were like little kids, right? And so since then, since then, you know, this this a long time ago, like that was in 1993, I think. And so been baptized in the Holy Spirit since then. And I'm telling you, it's been a journey, a journey with him. And I know it's genuine, it's real. And uh, like Paul says, you know, I have many times, I, I, there's many, sometimes I sing, I sing songs in the Spirit. Do you, anybody here sings? I sing songs. I said, wow, Lord, that's a good one. That's a good song, you know, with the lyric, the, with the with the beat, you know, the, with the beat there. One time, Craig Borker, one time I prophesied in tongues, and it was rhyming. Uh, and no, it, not in tongues. I prophesied, and it was rhyming. <gasps> wow, that's awesome, Lord, you know, the Spirit of God. And so God, the Holy Spirit, is just like, is the, the best friend we could ever have, right? It's just, he's everything that we need. No wonder we, that's why... I, this morning, I, all these songs were about him because he is special. Like he's the best friend you will ever have. And if you're submerged in him, if you're induced in power, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what the enemy throws our way, right? It doesn't matter. It doesn't, I don't know about you, but you know, sometimes I will share some stuff that I hear that's happening and all that. And some people around me are afraid. <gasps> Why are you scared? You should not be scared. We have we are overcomers. How can you become an overcomer? It's only by being induced with power, filled with the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to end this today. Uh, stay tuned next week because <laughs> I'm going to go inside the human heart. I'm going to share many, many things about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's so, so awesome to know. And so uh, I don't know how far the Holy Spirit will allow me to go next week, but I want to give him full full access to my heart, right? To encourage you. See, this message is an encouragement. And say, hey, there's more to your Christianity than you taught. Way more. Amen, right? <laughs> I know you guys know it. And so I would just like to finish this uh, message uh, with a prayer. Um, I just pray. Even now, like you don't even have to wait till next week. If you really want the baptism of the Spirit, just go one on one. If you're a Christian, you have to be a Christian. You have to receive Jesus as Lord. Very important <laughs> because you'll never receive it. It's going to be a false spirit. So, so you got to get saved. How do you do that? You receive Jesus as your Lord. He died for you on the cross. He shed blood for you, for you to have eternal life, Zoe life. Awesome life from inside out. And so if you're genuine, if you really see yourself as a sinner and need of the Savior, hey, God's listening. Receive him as your Lord. Then you start a brand spanking life. The Word of God says so. It call, it's called a being born again or the new birth or you know a new creation, Christ Jesus. And if you do that, then you can actually ask God, God, I want the baptism. And if you believe it, then God will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. And then uh, phone me <laughs> if you have my phone number. But anyway, Lord, I just pray for those listening here in this house, and I pray for those listening online. I just pray, Lord God, they will hunger for more of you because there sure is. There's a life, a Zoe life, a life, incredible life we can live. doesn't matter what happens in the world. You're there for us, and you empower to be able to endure it. And so I just pray that these people listening will be endued with power. And I pray for those here too, Lord God. I just pray for them. I pray they will be kept safe and on fire for you in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen.